What came to me as I think over this passage about the Spirit is that we can't see what is being born when we're in the midst of labor. We can't see the final novel when we're in the brainstorming phase. We can't see the, what the final outcome of our business startup will be when we're creating the business plan to get it going. We can't see what the garden is going to look like when we're just starting to dig and to pull up what's dead and to plant new seeds. Instead, it's a process that gets us there. Creation, birth, it's a process. It doesn't mean we wait around passively. Instead, it can be an active waiting, a kind of uh, active surrendering. And the promise isn't that it's easy. That's Paul's point in this passage. That in the midst of our laboring for something we can't see, in the midst of our tendency to plan for what we can't control, in the midst of waiting to see the end result, in the midst of all of that, that this process doesn't, this passage doesn't promise that it will be easy. But instead, it promises something else, which is that through all the waiting and all the hoping, the Spirit is there right alongside us, longing with us, groaning with us, praying with us, even interceding on our behalf when we don't have words. The Spirit holds on to hope on our behalf, even when we don't see the thing we hope for yet, even when we might be grasping for it and groaning for it and not really believing that it will come. I think of the year plus that we have all had, and it's great that things are opening up now, and there's lots of hope in that. And also, normal has changed. And so in the midst of it, we can't always see where God is or what God is doing. We can't always see what it is that God is giving birth to in our lives, in the church. And yet the Spirit groans with us and prays with us and intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words, Paul says, inviting us to cling to hope that God is working through all of it. 